Hey, what's up everybody? I'm James and you're watching Blue Dog Reptiles. Now today we're talking about probably one of the most common animals in the reptile industry and that is the ball python. Now this right here, this is pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin is a big old girl. Uh, she's an orange dream uh, fire g-stripe ball python. She's about a year old and as you can see she's got that beautiful coloration to her and as you can see we have lots of different ball pythons and different setups for them but i did want to talk a little bit about it because there's so much controversy on these guys on whether or not they're a good pet and i say absolutely these guys are now let's dive into what these guys all need for care um yeah pumpkin's like eh, what's going on i'm on tv look at me and all pumpkin's doing right now is just smelling and being curious as to what's going on um but yeah temperatures on these guys the cool side of their tank needs to be between 75 and 80 degrees the warm side should be about 80 to 85 with a basking spot of 88 to 92 degrees um these guys are going to need a heat pad and if you can't accomplish the hot spot you can also incorporate uh, a low wattage basking bulb on the top um, these guys get their name because when they're scared they curl up in a ball yeah he's like ah i don't she's like i don't know what's going on but i mean yeah look at that coloration i love ball pythons just because they come in so many different morphs but yeah Humidity on these guys should be between 55 and 60%. Now, uh, you should have a couple of different peaks in your humidity. Uh, one should be in the morning and one should be in the evening. And uh, pretty much you can tell if your humidity is off. When these guys go into shed, it should be a clean, solid shed. It shouldn't be broken up into pieces. And if you notice that it's breaking up into pieces, then your humidity is off just a little bit. Um, the other thing, these guys can live a long time. Uh, this one that I'm pointing at right now uh, is a super fire, uh, I'm sorry, a super pastel firefly uh, with possible vanilla in him. Um, he's a good boy, it's his favorite little hiding spot. But as you can see, I have multiple different uh, hiding spots for him. Uh, we have the basking light up top, as well as an under the tank heater and a water bowl that's big enough for him to fit in. Where are you going? Huh? Are you just being adventurous? Call you adventure snake? But yeah, like I said, guys, before you go out and buy one of these guys, be mindful that these guys do can live up to 30 years. That's a long, long time. And we want to make sure that these guys are always properly taken care of. They're just so awesome. These guys are so docile. They just don't care. And he's gonna go see what's going, or she's gonna go see what's going. Now, tank size on these minimum, so these are younger ones that are in these enclosures. Uh, they're yearlings or less. And uh, minimum size should be a 20 gallon. Um, when you get, and adults, they should be in probably a, about a 40 gallon breeder. Um, the problem I see though, is that people will put a baby snake. Oh, let's see if we can see. No, he's back behind the water. This one's underneath the log. But I see people putting newborns in a 40 breeder. And the problem with these little noodles is that they think everything in the world is out to get them and so if you put them in a 40 breeder you need to make sure that you have lots and lots of hiding spots otherwise they're going to stay to one side they're not going to come out um, and essentially they may even have issues with dehydration or starvation um, just because they don't want to come out at all so if you do have a bigger enclosure or you build your own, just make sure that there are plenty, plenty of hiding spots. 
the origin of these guys these guys come from west africa crazy right and there's a couple of different variations of all pythons but it's crazy when you see the pides and you're like you actually survive you're white and you survive but yeah they do 100 percent and some people you know they like all the crazy colors like this g-stripe here some people like the albinos some people like the spiders and there are lots of there's different health risks with different ones um the spiders do have the occasional neurological issues so do the ghosts um the albinos uh run the risk of blindness and uh i've seen this in a couple of animals that we've had here and uh it's just something to be mindful and keep in contact with your local exotic vet <laughs> and uh that way they can help you through the process if your animal does uh, come down with one of those um, unfortunately ending life traits. Um, but I mean, it, it depends on when in their life they actually cure it. If it's a baby, it's more dramatic because they have to be taught. Like we had a baby blind albino and uh, over time uh, she did bounce back but uh, it took her a while to figure out how to properly eat and she would miss a couple of times. So it's on you to work with that animal. Now, neurological issues when they're babies, it's a lot, or also known as the wobble, it's a lot harder to bounce back from. Um, it's essentially the neurological issue is a uh, brain disease that they're, they may have a strike response, but their brain could tell them that the food is not food and so they'll constantly spit it out and they'll lose weight and it's just it's not good and you're like well does this one have a wobble no she doesn't she's just moving around and i'm trying to rotate her to keep her in camera but now the diet on these guys sometimes a deal breaker is what these guys eat and these guys eat rodents uh, this girl right here actually eats weaned rats and you're like, well, how do you know what size to feed your snake? Well, essentially you wanna go by the fattest part on the body, which is right here. And that rodent should be slightly smaller. And I mean slightly smaller than what this size is. And in doing so, these guys can dislocate their jaws so that they can eat bigger prey. You can see, oh, if my camera will focus. Nope, it's gonna focus on my tattoo. Hi. But yeah, these guys, uh, they can dislocate their jaw to eat things that are bigger than them. So um, it is a good, if you get babies, it is good to uh, track their weight. That way that you know that they're growing properly and that uh, they're at the appropriate size for the appropriate age. The prices on these guys vary a lot. I mean, you have ball pythons that are which we actually have a baby ball python in one of our bioactive setups and that's a hundred dollar snake versus this g-stripe right here is a seven hundred dollar snake so it really varies on what their morphs are and that's going to determine what the price is uh, some people like the more exotic ones because they're good breeder lions. Some people like them just because they're pretty. Yeah, you're a very pretty girl. Handling, <laughs> I definitely wanna save this one till last because handling is very, very easy with these guys. Um, you do get the occasional one that has a little bit of sass to it, um, but overall, these guys are very, very handleable. Um, they really don't have any issues um, like I said, I can't say definitively that one won't bite because guess what? They got teeth and if they're hungry or your hand smells like rodents, it could be an accidental bite. And nine times out of 10, that's what it is. It's an accidental bite or you startled it and it's a defensive strike. But yeah, it's unlike the, the boa that grows much, much larger. These guys typically grow about three and a half, four feet. Whereas your boas are gonna be six to nine feet. Now I would feel, I mean, my daughter's seven years old and she has no problem carrying these guys around. As you can see, it's not much effort. I'm holding this girl with one hand. They're very, very easy 
the handle versus a boa that you know when you get into the, some of the the bigger boas you definitely need to have a second person there uh, for supervision or um, just to make sure that there uh, are no complications at all especially with a girl uh, a big boa that weighs a ton but yeah guys betting on these guys uh it really varies on what your personal preference is we have some of our ball pythons on bio bioactive substrates we have some on reptibark um so it just depends on what you want the setup to look at but the biggest thing is uh making sure that uh these guys stay hydrated which is very very crucial make sure that they have good sheds good diet um and with the diet with that being said these guys are notorious for going on kicks where they just <laughs> where they just won't eat now on a big girl like this it's not really an issue if she misses a meal or two but if it's a baby and they go on strike where they're just like uh-uh not happening then that is a concern because they don't have the weight to lose so consult your uh, local exotic vet on that and uh, he will, he or she will help you with the proper uh, plan of action. So yeah, guys, if you want your very first pet snake, then I definitely recommend the ball python. These guys are absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, when these guys stretch out, they're just big old noodles. They don't care. Hope you guys enjoyed this video stay tuned next friday we got a good awesome unique uh reptile for you so as always thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time say bye pumpkin <laughs>